So today's video will be a real-world driving experience with the ID3. It will be one of my longer trips. Unfortunately, the car has been at the shop for three weeks or so. So I got it back last week on Friday and I had to switch out the camera module in the front where we have the radars and so on that was giving some error codes so they opted to switch that part out and now it seems to be working fine so what we'll be doing today is to actually deliver a car part we have shoved it into the back as you can see so it is a car part for the 330e so it's a fellow swede purchasing a front splitter which i never mounted on my 330e so hopefully he will enjoy it a little bit more than what i did so the temperature outside today is minus three degrees celsius and as you can see we have a snowy condition we have winter wheels on so these are 18 inch wheels with 21555 michelin x ice snow on and uh, these are quite new i think they're new for this season from michelin then so it is nice to try these out as well and uh, i have been preheating the car so i've set the temperature to 22 and a half degrees celsius we have had the seat heater on as well but that i will turn off during the trip then and the trip will be something around 110 120 kilometers going forth and back hopefully the state of charge will be 100% when we leave now and we will see how much we have consumed in these type of conditions and it's going to mainly be speeds ranging from 50 to 110 or 120 kilometers an hour or so with that said then let's jump inside and start the trip and see how it all will go I just wanted to show you what climate control settings we have so we have 22 degrees Celsius we are in manual mode so not smart climate etc we don't have any seat heating on and no steering wheel heating on either and I don't need that because it's quite warm in the car at the moment and looking at the state of charge and where we are at now let's just reset everything just to be sure that everything is reset and then the charging status is 100% so let's start the journey and see where we'll end up when we are back at home I am on the highway what I didn't mention earlier is that I usually tend to drive a little bit faster than what the speed limit allows I should be saying that on the video but that's the way it is so I will try to sit around 10 km kilometers an hour or so higher than what the actual speed limit is because that's how I usually drive them so uh, I'll try to give you as correct number as possible with as real life situation as possible then so that is that and also what I did mention with the 100% state of charge we had earlier at departure it was indicating somewhere around 275 to 280 kilometers to empty charge then or depleted battery and at the moment it is indicating 267 kilometers to empty charge but for now i'll uh, cut the video and we'll see what it looks like in a little bit now at the destination so it means we are halfway through everything has gone smoothly the car has been driving nicely apart from some new error messages that we got one of them i assume led to that the adaptive cruise control stopped working all of a sudden so i the adaptive cruise control is not working then i can't show you the error messages because i have turned the car off so the error messages did disappear so let's see if they will pop up once we do the drive back home i'll catch you up on that but let me just show you some figures that we have during this drive then so we have driven 51 kilometers and as you can see the average speed is 66 kilometers an hour but I did drive up to this parking lot and was stationary so the average speed did decrease when I pulled up into the parking lot it was indicating 74 kilometers an hour as an average speed and the average consumption has actually increased while I was stationary so when I pulled up I think it was showing 19.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so I don't know if that is good or not but I think my BMW 330e in similar conditions was around 17 to 18 kilowatt hours if I remember it correctly and as you can see the trip has taken around 46 minutes to get here and with the state of charge that we have which is 84% at the moment it is showing 270 kilometers to empty battery when I did pull up to the parking lot I think it was indicating 240 kilometers or so but let's wrap everything up once we are back at home and I will try to see if we will get the error message again or not but for now let's meet up with the driver and deliver the package and make our trip back home and we'll wrap the video up we are now back at home and I just thought I'll show you what the numbers look like and also we did get that error message that I will or error messages that I was talking about earlier but I think I know what it could be it might be a design flaw I hope it is what I think it is but still it's a shame if that is the case but we'll have a look at that in a second but for now let's have a look at the numbers that we have 
now that we are back at home. So as you can see, since the start, we have done 103 kilometers in total. The average speed has been 71 kilometers an hour. The average consumption has been 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and the total trip took one hour and 27 minutes and also again then i need to mention i was sitting for three four five minutes before i turned everything off hence why the average speed got reduced and also the average consumption did increase while we were stationary comparing the numbers then so this is what we now have when i have reached the house i don't know if this is good or not let me know in the comment sections below what you think and looking at the state of charge we are at 64 percent and the car is indicating 205 kilometers until empty charge but when i did pull up to the house i think it was showing 183 or so kilometers to an empty charge so all in all for me this works quite well i mean i don't do longer trips but for those of you who drive in these type of conditions for a longer journeys etc this might be something to have a look at and consider if it's sufficient or not for you let's head on outside and let me show you why i think i got those error messages uh, thrown on the dash and why the adaptive cruise control stopped working so let's head on outside there we have the camera module that was switched out because it was faulty but as you can see the windscreen wipers have cleaned this area off so i don't think this is causing any issues as such what i think is causing the issues that i saw now that i was driving and the adaptive cruise control stopped working is behind this plate here we have a bunch of radars etc and sensors and as you can see we have snow and grime and ice building up on this area some of it i have peeled off now just to show you and i think this is then throwing off the sensors and radars and in my opinion this is a design flaw if that is the case for us of us that live in areas where we have snow and ice let me know in the comment sections below if you think this is what's causing the issues that i was showing if that is the case then I think in my opinion that this is a design flaw because some of us do actually drive in snow and icy condition and we need to have those type of functionalities still working even though if we have snow and grime etc on the road so that was all for today's video it was unscientific but I hope it has given you some insight of what it is like to drive the ID3 during winter period with regards to the range and the efficiency if you have any comments at all or questions just hit me up in the comment sections below and I will try to answer them the best i can if you did like today's video give it a thumbs up and do remember to subscribe if you like the content of the channel that is and hit that bell icon to stay notified when i upload new videos with the id3 the mx5 that is inside car detailing etc but with that said i'll be seeing you on the next one